Last week we discussed the, the lithium batteries and the solar system, how the charging system is working. And this week we're going to discuss a problem, how to solve a problem with the Leopard 45. One advantage of having a broken arm, <laughs> I don't need to carry stuff. <laughs> so this week we're going to do the episode here um, while we're doing a pry. So we're going to try and make you guys jealous. So we will see how this pry thing is working. Okay, Pietro, uh, what was the problem with the Leopard 45 when you were standing at the helm? Yeah, when I was standing, all I was first of all sitting at the helm and then I stood up and then I stood on the crossbar and nothing worked. I just couldn't see the front um, port side peak or the aft. There's, there's going to be a problem if I have to dock on that side of the boat. Okay, so what do you think should we do to solve that problem? Well, we can either extend my legs or we can extend my eyes. So let's rather extend my eyes with a downward camera, a camera facing downward. Okay, so we need to look for a camera, but I think it should be a special camera. Yeah, I think it should be weather resistant, salt resistant, water resistant. Have you researched any cameras? Yeah, there was a Garmin as well, um, which we were quite set on, but then we got whole, or we came onto the website of the, eight, what is it, the Fleur. And that seems to be the one that we're going to go with. The one that is actually coming with the Axiom Pros. If you go to the Raymarine site, they, go, they redirect you to a Fleur site, to Fleur.com, which means forward looking infrared cameras. And that seemed like a very good, very good option. Um, where are we going to place this camera? Um, okay, so one of the reasons why we did not take the Leopard option, because Leopard does give a forward-looking camera option, is that the uh, Leopard option, is the camera is under the forward cockpit, under the roof, looking to the bow. So that is as if you're looking to the bow, but it doesn't look at the side. And Pietro will not be able to see the side. So from my point of view, is that we need to put it onto the spreader bar. So if it looks from the spreader bar, you can see the forward bows, uh, the port bows, and also the, the port the off side. All you can see the whole, the whole side. So if we do need to dock on that side, you will be able to see everything on that side. The other option we're looking at is the FLIR option, as we mentioned. So FLIR stands for Forward Looking Infrared Camera. So the Forward Looking Infrared Camera will make also that during the night, we will be able to, to actually go up to a mooring ball or look at the boats, navigate through the, through the, the, the anchorage or where, where there's a lot of boats. You can still go through there and you can still see. So you can actually go straight up to the mooring ball no excuses, you cannot miss the mooring ball. <laughs> but it sounds like all the top big three guys, they miss a mooring ball at one point. She will have flair, you cannot <laughs> miss a mooring ball. <laughs> uh, so, um, but if the top guys can miss it, I think... I need are, to make at least one mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to make plenty of mistakes. 
So we can actually then look at the camera. So from our side, we want a camera that can also then look forward to look at the bay or the anchorage. Uh, for that, we actually looked at two options: the M300. So if you go to if you go to the Raymarine site, you go to options and you look at cameras. It actually automatically routing you to, to the Fleur.com yeah. site. And on the Fleur.com site, there's two options: the M200 and the M300. The difference, besides the one thousand dollar difference <laughs> between the 200 and the 300, is that the 300 can turn. 360. 360. So if we're going to make the 360 one, then we can actually also have the camera looking at the back or at the front or at the side. So we can actually see if any other uh, vehicles is approaching us. And Oops. I think Dalos would have been excellent <laughs> when they were stealing the, the dinghy, when a guy was trying to steal yeah. the dinghy. You can then use this camera to actually see everything around you and you know exactly where... where, where uh, the potential thief was. Um, another thing about the infrared is the man overboard. Yes, that's a very good point. Um, almost forgot about that one. So according to the the, the FLIR, that M200 and M300 FLIR camera, you can see a man in the water for up to 450 meters. I know it's not, <laughs> this might be far and you can go very fast, very far with a, with a sailboat. But if there's a man overboard, even during daylight, you can see the man in the water very good. As and this, if ultra red. Yeah. As, yeah, because you can actually see the person and it will show you. So it actually makes a little spot there and you can actually see the person. And that's also made another good reason to put it onto the spreader bar because then you can see very far. So I think that is actually one of a very good reason to pay the, the extra, <laughs> the extra buck. thousand, <laughs> thousand bucks. So that if you do have man overboard situation, this one can very quickly spot a heated mm. object in the water because the, the person will be much warmer mm. than the surrounding water and this is why it can pick it up so quickly. First, Patreon. Gidres. <laughs> Gidres, <laughs> cheers, yes. We built a boat, me and Gidres. We actually built a wooden boat called Savannah. <laughs> cheers, Gidres. There's five double USB ports all over the boat, strategically placed. But Frick has a problem with them. Yeah, the problem of the USB, the one that I come, is, the, is, is a USB 2 standard. Which is not a problem for the normal charging things, but lately, like you might have seen the common, the, uh, the GoPro, the new GoPros, the new cell phones, all the new electronics is coming out of a USB-C charging port, which is actually a super fast charge port. So it can actually charge your phone within 20 minutes to, from zero to full. But it means that needs to go from 1.5 amps or 3 amperes at 5 volt. So it is a very different charger that you will need then for that. So I think at least the two saloon ones that is there. So we will have four super fast charging. So don't 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 get, get confused by fast charger, which That's is like an iPhone. That's not fast charging. Fast charging is really from zero to 100 percent in something like 20 minutes. Okay, 220. There's a couple of 220 points on the boat as well, but in the um, forward peak where we're going to put our washing machine, we're going to need an extra point there. And then in the aft saloon, um, we're going to have a little camping fridge freezer and a high pressure hose. So we might put a double one underneath the bunk there at the back. And in the main saloon as well, we're going to have an overhead projector that we need to... Well, it's going to be forward facing, but we need a plug there for that one as well, with a bracket. Oh, just a little correction there. Oh. It's aft cockpit. Oh, aft. Aft. <laughs> ah, I said saloon. <laughs> Yeah, we're still learning all these terminologies, <laughs> but we need to get it right before we write the exam. Sorry so. about that one, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, I normally travel, I've been working already in 24 different countries and lived in 24 different post-conflict countries, by the way. And I never carry a TV with me, I always carry the overhead projector with me. And it's a very nice projector, so we're going to have 
we're going to have a big screen movie in yeah. our catamaran so um, yeah so we want to put a, a big screen that can scroll down and a projector then that will actually in a saloon mm -hmm. that um, we can then watch movies or YouTube videos <laughs> <laughs> yeah. watch the other sailing channels <laughs> talking about 220 volts what appliances are you planning to have in the on the boat mm. um, over and above the standard like the, the washing machine obviously a vacuum cleaner um, we're gonna have obviously kettle and then oh an ice maker we did mention we're gonna bring our own we ice, have maker. An ice maker over I there can actually <laughs> show it to you so it's nice and portable it doesn't take up a lot of counter space and it works like a charm and then we're going to have a bread maker and a microwave. I think I've covered them all. All the basic big appliances. Oh, and a pressure cooker. The two that's of us. Not, that's not a 220 <laughs> volt. I hope not a pressure cooker is working on 220 <laughs> volt. <laughs> it does. What? A plug-in. We're going to get an electrical one. Not one on a stovetop one. We're going to plug it in. It's an electrical pressure cooker. I think he, we need bigger, bigger batteries. He doesn't like green stuff, <laughs> but he loves soup. So I'm going to be making lots of veggie soup and stuff so that he can get all his nutrition in. Then he won't break bones so easily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Five meter <laughs> full. <laughs> I should have broken at least more bones. <laughs> yeah, your green stuff. If I had green stuff in, I, I would have broken more things. I'm sure of that. <laughs> yeah, so the pressure cooker is very important. <laughs> you mentioned... A washing machine and one of the things is there is an option for leopard to put the washing machine in but the option is only available for the three cabin for the owner's, owner's version cabin. because the doors are wider so you can actually bring the, the washing machine in and you can put it somewhere in that one hole so where do you think we're going to put the washing machine there's no option for for a four cabin um, in leopard so you cannot bring that's why we do it, the aftermarket. So where are we going to put this washing machine? Thank you for our aftermarket guy. He came up with a brilliant solution. It's going to go into the forward P cabin. Um, it, it's a peak. Uh, the storage underneath it would have is normally a berth that you put in there. So what we're going to do is put, try and put the machine, or we're going to put the machine on sliders. So it can slide forward so that you can reach in behind it and stow a sail there or whatever. You can stow something there. Or push it backwards because there's a door underneath it that you can go into storage at the bottom. So it's, it's very versatile. The only thing is you have to go through the, the front cabin to reach the, the door of the washing machine. But hey, you wash once every two weeks, so it's not a, a big deal for us. So that's a perfect solution. Now someone asked us, or actually someone actually told us in the comments that we don't need the washing machine. Um, so we, me and my brother, we went on a... On a crossing or as you know already and in that crossing by accident these hatch not by accident it is very hot so your hatches are open and the storm uh, a, a wave from the back was actually coming over the boat and go went into his hatch so his blankets Something were wet. full of salty water and people that has done crossings or most of the time they're in in the doldrums the equator and very tropical you know, guys know that those, the, the sheets and the blankets, all of it becomes very salty. So the salt, you need to you wash need to off. Wash the salt you up. cannot wash yeah. it with salt water and hang it out because the, the breeze is full of salt. Everything is just salty. Um, if you've done this ocean crossing, you would know what we're talking about. Everything is just salty. And what if we're going to go extreme cold as well? We can't hang the stuff out to dry. <laughs> yeah, it will <laughs> so frozen. It's going to freeze. We have broken sheets. Uh, yeah, it's true. So the tumble dryer there is going to be very serious as well. So we will also show you guys, I think, practical terms what we talk about. And that same room, laundry room, if you mm. can call it like that, will also become the, the workshop room. So we will show you an aftermarket how the workshop mm -hmm. thing will work. So we have got great plans for the workshop. So that little door is not such a big deal. Yeah, it's not that big deal. So you're going to be able to reach it. <laughs> that is for the next episode.
this is it for this week. Next week we're going to talk about the helm enclosure. We've got great plans for the helm enclosure. The also enclosure. the cockpit enclosure. Um, cushions. Some cushions. Because that's also an aftermarket option and why we took it. So there's, there's a very nice episode coming up. Okay, till next week. Goodbye. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. <laughs> It's time for you to get out of full screen, hit the subscribe button if you have not done that before and then next to the subscribe button there's a bell button, hit that bell button and then please go and like our videos if you liked it. Thank you very much and thank you for all the subscribers. Support us on Patreon, like our pictures on Instagram and follow us on Facebook to become part of our social active experience.